Hi everyone, Jason from Makera here, and in this video, we are looking at the tool library in Makera Camp. Tools are an incredibly important aspect of subtractive manufacturing, as they are what create the cutting and engraving operations to bring our designs to life. The tool library in your CAM software should correspond to the tools that you have in real life, so that way you can prepare your design files for manufacturing using your tools in CAM. Once we've opened up our tool library in Makera Cam, we can browse across different groups and bits that are provided in the Makera store are preloaded with default feeds and speed settings that you can choose from. We can see that there's different tool groups for the example tools that ship loaded with the machine, as well as flat end mills, engraving bits, ball nose bits, or drill bits. And each tool has its own set of parameters based on materials for what it would use. For example, after selecting a metal tool, I can see many different metals as well as softer materials that would work with this tool. But if I were to go to a non-metal tool, I'm not going to see aluminum or brass as this tool is not designed to work with that. You may want to create your own tool group, which you can do by adding a new group and naming it. And here you can either create new tools or copy and edit existing tools. For example, I'm gonna go back to my single flute metal tools and copy one of the tools. I'm then gonna head over to my tools, the group that I created, and paste that tool. Here, I can then choose to keep it the same or perhaps edit this tool to match a different tool that I have with similar parameters. Like for example, adjusting this to match a 25 millimeter end mill that I have, and of course, making sure that all of the feeds and speed parameters match what I'm using. You can also create an entirely new tool, adjust the default tool number, which can also be changed when creating paths, as well as choose the type of bit and set the diameter of the bit. And then you can adjust your different material parameters. So for example, if I would like to use this tool with hardwoods, I need to enable this material and then adjust the parameters to match this material. I can then enable whichever materials I'd like to use for this tool and then click apply. You also have the ability to duplicate, edit, delete, or adjust any of the tools in these other groups that are created by default, but we always recommend you make copies of your tools whenever editing them. You can also export your tool library and save it as a backup, as well as import those libraries if you'd like to restore a backup, as well as import different tools from different manufacturers. When creating a path, we can select our tools and we can see the tools that we've created. Any materials that you've enabled when either editing or adding tools will then be options to select the parameters for that path. Those material parameters also correspond to the stock options. And if the stock that you're using is available in the tool that you're using, these parameters will be automatically selected as discussed in the stock and materials video. But it's important to note that if a group is not enabled, it will not pop up as an option for parameters when creating paths. If you'd like to use a tool with a certain material, you need to first enable that material in the tool library. Although again, it's important to note that even after having your set parameters and tool numbers within the tool library, these things can always be changed temporarily in the path. Changing the parameters here in the path will not change the master parameters in the tool library. Those are your defaults. If you want these parameters to be changed automatically every time you use the tool, they must be changed in the library rather than in the path settings.